morning, church. Welcome back. We truly missed you all. We thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. Those of you online as well, thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. If you're new, thank you for being with us today. We truly hope you have an, enc an encounter with Christ this morning. And for our members who came today, thank you so much. Let's worship Christ this morning. And if you're out on your couch, why don't you rise from your chair? Let's pray together. And I ask those of us here to just rise as well as we pray together. Let's pray, church. Father God, most precious Lord, thank you, God, for allowing us another opportunity to come together and worship you, Lord. What a beautiful way to come back together and just spend this amazing time with you, Lord God. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit just come now. And we know, Lord God, that you will continue to move, move in this church, continue to move in your members, and move those who are watching online, Lord God. Father, I know that you're with us today, and you're always with us. And we love you so much, Lord God. And I pray that our praises and our worship be glorifying to you, Lord. We want to magnify you in this place. We want to uplift your name and give you so much thanks for all that you have done and continue to do. Father, as we worship you, we want to just praise you with every breath that we have, Lord God. You are worthy. We love you. We glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let's pray for you.
truly grateful to finally come together and gather, Lord God. And just continue to be with those online, Lord God. I know your spirit is with them. And just want to lift up all those, Lord God, who continue to be in prayer physically, even emotionally, Lord God. We want to lift up those burdens to you, Lord. You are worthy, and I know through our praises and our worship, Lord God, you will hear the cry of our hearts. You know exactly, Lord God, what's going with us. So, Father, as we worship you, Lord, may it be in spirit and in truth. May it be a sweet aroma to your throne. Thank you, Lord God. We worship you.
praise the Lord. Let us go before our Heavenly Father, who is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us bow before Him. Holy God, thank You for giving us life, for giving us breath, the breath of life. For the Spirit, Your Spirit that lives in us. We are so thankful, O oh Heavenly Father, that we are able to come together again in person. Yes. May you be lifted up. May you be glorified. We pray, Father, that as we continue to lay all of our cares, struggles, worries at your feet, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. We continue to give you all of our concerns. Where there needs to be healing in Jesus' name, we ask for your healing. Where there's restoration, we ask for your restoration. For wisdom and clarity, we ask more of your spirit to speak and to guide us. Thank you that you are the father to the fatherless. The God of all comfort and grace and mercy. Again, thank you, God, for sending your son, the Lord Messiah, the Lord Christ, to come to dwell among us, to be Emmanuel. Who would ever think that you would come to be with us, the with us God? To ransom us, to die for us, to defeat sin, to rise again. That you might get all the glory and that we will be co-heirs with Jesus forever and ever. And so God, I pray, Father, for someone that we know that is in pain and there's sickness and there's any kind of disease. In Jesus' name, we ask for your healing that you'll purge any of the sickness out of the body, Lord God. Father, where there is much need of restoration, the enemy, the devil, has come in and there is drama among the family. We just ask, Father, oh, restore the families, Lord God. Bring us back to you. Father, at our workplace where you have sent us, Lord God. May we continue to be your light in a lost and broken world. May we continue to emanate you, Jesus, at the workplace. And the schools are about to open up for public schools. May you continue to send your youth, Father, to be a light in the schools. We continue to lift up doctors and nurses and first responders continue to pray in Jesus name against this pandemic I say it again we continue to pray against this pandemic in Jesus name again thank you for life I pray father for anyone online anyone right here in this building father that maybe feels dry maybe has not felt your presence such a long time. Father, we know it's not always about your feelings and, and emotions, but I pray, Father, for your covering upon Vallejo New Life, that we will know without a doubt that your presence is here. If we're watching online, that your presence is there. Your, pray, Father, more of your presence. And we pray all these things holy, powerful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen. You may have a seat. Again, thank you so much for joining us. I know a lot of you are still joining us online. Some of our families are, are camping and they've, they've communicated to me they're, they're uh, gone this weekend and they're, they're having a great time, much needed time together with family and friends. But again, thank you so much. We want to share with you a continued... Uh, the lifeblood of our church, what's going on, and I want to invite Joyce to come, and uh, she's got some announcements she wants to uh, share on behalf of uh, the church board and the staff, so come Joyce, thank you.
morning. Good morning. For our announcement, I have several announcements here. First of all, we are so thankful that our church is very active with our different outreach programs. And the first one is the food box outreach. We usually deliver before, even before, even when the, there is the pandemic, we are already delivering food yeah. boxes. That's right. So we are so happy to, for that. And we have 90 boxes to be delivered. And Pastor Tim has a clipboard for us to sign how many boxes of food box do we need to pick up today. And you can pick them after, you can pick up those boxes after the service and just let us know if you need help in carrying those boxes to your cars today. So food box outreach is number one. Second announcement, we have the Zoom Bible studies. It's very, I, I hear them once in a while, especially the men's group. This is very good one. So I encourage you to join the Zoom Bible studies. Now, we have the adult Bible study led by Jake Foster every Tuesday at 7 p.m. The high school and middle school Wednesdays with Pastor Tim at 7, and the men's Bible study every Thursday, 7 p.m. Please contact Pastor Tim for the Zoom link if you want to join, and I encourage you to join. Next one. You see, our church is very clean. Thank you to those people who come and clean our church. And because of that, our cleaning groups will resume oh, with group A. I hope you still remember your groups, groups A, B, C, and D. Group A will start on Sunday or this week. Don't forget your groups, please. And the last one, and not the least, and this is very important to all of us. We will be having a Good Friday service on April 2nd at 7 p.m. Easter service will be at 10 on April 4. We will also discuss from the church board if we are going to have sunrise service. I know this church is always having the sunrise service. So church board will have a meeting on that and details will be announced later. And in, link, in conjunction to that Easter, as your NMI president, as you voted me as your NMI president, we will also get our Esther offering on April 4th. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joyce. Uh, again, so yeah, Easter services at the same time, 10.30 uh, for, for Easter service. I want to invite Pastor Roy to come at this time, if our ushers can come. Pastor Roy is going to lead us in our offering. Prayer and uh, Mary Lou is going to uh, sing uh, a special also. But uh, Pastor Roy, would you come and pray? And if our ushers can come, let's pray. Before I before I pray, I would like to uh, share also what we have uh, studied this morning uh, in the group of uh, young adult. Uh, we are studying the book of Luke in the presence of. Uh, the young adult, uh, we start at uh, 9.15 in the morning, every Sunday. We end at 9.45 to prepare for the divine service. We studied about Luke chapter 6, verses uh, 37 to 42, concerning about to judge others. We learn about learning first, before you lead to others. Right? Uh, learning is very uh, important for us. We are disciples of Jesus. It's one of us, our learner. We learn from the life first in our life. Okay? Before we say something to others, we need to say something also to ourselves. Look at yourself first before 
you give something to others. Because in, in that verses alone, we can see and we can learn how can you lead somebody else if you are still blind, right? You need to see first Jesus. Accept him as Lord and personal Learner, disciples, before you become an apostle, messenger, you need to be a learner, a disciple. And we are all disciples of Jesus, learner of Jesus. So as we uh, give our thoughts and offer for today, I know and I hope that we learn how to give, how to love Jesus through giving, through our tithes and offering. May I, shall we pray? Our most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you, O Lord, for the teaching of loving you, not only through our deeds, not only through our words, but, O oh Lord, through our tithes and offering. Give us, O oh Lord, your enlightenment. Teach us, O oh Lord, how to love you through also our giving, through also the source of our income. May we see the love that you are bestowing upon us through our work, through our family also. Thank you. May your name be glorified as we give. And help us, O oh Lord, to be part for the expansion of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for all of you who continue to give online. NLCvallejo.org. We appreciate that church family. Here you come. Thank you so much. Yeah.
was about a year ago when the church uh, flew my wife and I out here back in 2020 of March, and my wife and I were worshiping here, and uh, when I was invited to come on the stage, I remember walking up right here, and I turned and looked at everybody, and I felt the presence of God. Amen. And it was uh, an exciting but also scary feeling that when I got to the pulpit right here about a year ago, God was telling me, this is your next church. Amen. 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 And I just, I've had my mask on the whole time, but I just could not stop smiling and out of joy because we get to be together again. Yes? Amen. You guys ready for the Word of God? If so, say yes. 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 It says here in God's Word, and it should be up there, in Acts chapter 20, verse 24. Acts chapter 20, verse 24. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me, if only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. I consider my life worth nothing, right? If I don't finish strong. Uh, you've seen a... Uh, uh, Epitaphs, grave sites, and you, if you ever walked in a cemetery and you've actually read some of the epitaphs and the writings about, you know, the short little one, two, three lines about the person, about the deceased, right? I uh, remember um, uh, kind of a, uh, a funny one. Uh, this is Here lies Lester Moore, four slugs from a 44, no less, no more. I mean, what, what an epitaph, right? Uh, here's another one in Tombstone, Arizona. This is an actual real one. It, uh, it says this, here lays Butch, we planted him raw. He was quick on the trigger, but slow on the draw, right? Uh, this, one's, this one's kind of funny, Culver City. He called Bill Smith a liar. That's all it said. Okay, think about it. He called Bill Smith a liar. And so now he's dead, right? Uh, New, Jer New Jersey Cemetery. Uh, she drank good ale, good punch and wine, and lived to the age of 99. Mel Blanc. You guys know who Mel Blanc, right? Funny. Yeah, uh, so his epitaph, epitaph is, that's all folks, right? That's what it says on his gravesite. Martin Luther King, what it says on his, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. And a couple of other serious ones, um, you know, I saw, uh, personally, this one, so small, so sweet, so soon. Another one, it says, she is resting peacefully with Jesus in that beautiful home above. Amen. And there's so many here that I wrote down, but here's one that, but that, that stuck in my head and my heart. Faithful follower of Jesus, fought the good fight, enjoying him now forever and ever. Amen. Yes? Amen. That's what I would love my gravestone to read. Something like that. Here lies Tim. Fought the good fight. Enjoying him now forever and ever. Amen. What so matters here in terms of Paul when, he's, when, he's, when he writes this, when he's given this divine words from God, is obviously, you know, salvation is found on the saving grace of Jesus and Christ alone. Right? But what is so dear to him that we're, we're reading here is that may I finish this race strong. Right? No matter where the finish line is. His heart here is that may I finish well. May I finish strong. Amen. I uh, did some research here. Because look, in 1 Timothy, if you hit it one more time, 1 Timothy chapter 4, the Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith, right? And follow deceiving spirits, right? Some people will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits. Social media is great, that we get to reconnect with loved ones and friends, friends from the past. 
But sometimes it's discouraging because I, I, I befriend or someone will befriend me. And I, will, I remember that we would, we would serve Jesus together. We would go to Mexico, right? We would go in, in the inner cities of Los Angeles and we would serve Jesus together. And then I would uh, get reacquainted with them on social media. And then I see what they're posting. And I can just tell. I'm not judging. I'm not judging. But I can just tell that they have abandoned their faith. And it breaks my heart. Right? And it's talking about here in the Word of God that some will abandon the faith. Some will start quickly and fizzle out and not finish strong. So it says this. Uh, take it one more time. So again, Paul is saying, For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. So what is he saying here? He's saying that I've given my everything. I've, give, I've given my all to the sake of Jesus. And he says this, I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which is the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. So again, he understands and grasps and is enjoying that salvation is found in the, in the mighty work of Jesus dying on the cross and rising again. But again, his heart's desire here is not only does he start well, but his desire is to finish strong. Check this out in terms of this study. Next thing here. Uh, a author here uh, did some studying in terms of uh, people in the Bible. And uh, he studied a hundred detailed biographies in the Bible. And two-thirds of the people that he, st he studied in Bible, Bible characters, Bible people ended poorly. So let's talk about it. This is in terms of his research here. Uh, so people that he said well, were, were cut off early. Right? They, they died early in their ministry. Uh, they, and we would probably consider some of these people in the first group that they finished strong, that they gave their life to the Lord. Right? So people like Samson, John the Baptist, who was obviously, as we know, beheaded. James, Absalom, Ahab. So he would put a, a category of people in the Bible that they, you know, uh, they, they got, their lives were cut off too early. Uh, another group, he, he wrote down some of these names. They finished poorly. That they were going downhill the later part of their lives. That they crawled to the finish line. And he, he wrote down Gideon, Eli, and Solomon. And then another group he put together uh, in his study that finished so-so, right? They, did, they uh, did not do what they could have done or should have done, right? David, Hezekiah, and Jehoshaphat. And there's other names there that he wrote down. And then this last group that got his attention, that got him so excited... And uh, in, our, in our men's Bible study, remember we talked about uh, finishing well, right? Uh, Simeon and Anna, right? At the, at the end of their age, they were... And again, what are we talking about in terms of finishing well, finishing strong? That the, at the end of their lives, that they were still at the core, that everything about them was Jesus, right? That they were still studying, that they were still passionate, that they were still, still serving. And so guys like Abraham and women, Job, Joseph, Joshua, Elijah, Daniel, Paul, Peter, Simeon, Anna, and the disciples, that he put in this category that these were people that finished strong at the end of their lives. And he wrote down that some who finished strong waited later in their lives to surrender their lives to Jesus. And some who finished strong went through incredible hardships huge difficulties and trials, but they still finished strong. All right, one more time. So why? Uh, why do people fail to finish strong? What takes place? What gets in the way? What, what causes people to abandon the faith. Splash down a few things here. Uh, imagine every Sunday that there was a buffet, right? Potlucks, which we used to do, right? I hear, 
right? We used to do potlucks. So imagine every Sunday that there was a buffet, a huge potluck, but it was the only time you ate. That was the only time you ate was Sundays. Mm. Would you be able to survive? Maybe. I, I found this. Uh, it says here, why I never eat. Why I never eat. Well, I was forced to eat as a child. People who eat all the time are hypocrites. They aren't really hungry. There are so many different kinds of food, I can't decide what to eat. I used to eat, but I got bored and stopped. I only eat on special occasions, like Christmas and Easter. None of my friends will eat with me. I'll start eating when I get older. I don't really have time to eat. I don't believe that eating does anybody any good. It's just a crutch to get you through life. I like this is my favorite one. Restaurants and grocery stores are only after your money. It's kind of silly there, but I hope you get the idea. People will abandon and can abandon the faith when they remove themselves from the family of God for a long period of time. From the source. Yes? And that's why you'll probably, if I haven't seen you in a while, as we begin, begin to reopen, you're going to get my text message. Praying for you. How are you doing? Right? Because we know biblically that if we remove ourselves from the family of God for a very long time, there can be spiritual death. Yes? Amen? That's, that's why it's so important. Sometimes you may not want to log in for that Zoom meeting. You're busy. You're, you have other things to do. You're tired. But I click on and click on because I'm relying on you. Obviously, my ultimate reliance is on our Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. But God is a genius that he created the church, the church family, to prepare each other. To meet him. Yes? Amen. So why? Why, do, why also do people abandon the faith? Uh, because people will look at hypocrisy in the church. That they'll see something that's hypocritical. And they don't want anything about that. And so they might walk away from the faith. Again, this is a splash down of, of, of a list here. Uh, that they'll stop using their gifts and talents and strengths that God has given them. And they become stale. And another one is, uh, I, I call this the, the, the smart friend college professor. They say that, you know what, if a child of God is, is going to youth group, once they get into college, the percentage is that three-fourths of them, once they get to college, will lose their faith in Jesus. Three-fourths of our youth. Because they get influenced by the world and the college professor and the influence of other people, new friends. People will abandon the faith and can abandon the faith because they do not rest. They do not take a Sabbath, right? Bad social habits and addictions. Past failures. Sometimes we allow the past failures in our life to, to bog us down. And the enemy, the devil, starts speaking to us that you're no good. You shouldn't go to church. You shouldn't be involved. And you allow your sin to keep you away from God and the family. There's so many other things, trials and hardships, right? If something drastic or, or, or difficult might happen in your life, a lot of times or we're, we're angry with somebody because of the injustice that was done to you. So this is what we sometimes do. I'm angry at this situation. This injustice that was done to me, and sometimes we'll shift that anger and blame who? God, right? 
And lastly, there's more here on this list. Why, why do people abandon the faith? Because we need to be reminded also that there, there is an enemy that wants to kill, steal, and destroy us. Yes? My daughter knows many of my stories that I tell. Um, this is the paintballing one, Cameron. But have you ever been paintballing? This man has, right? This guy's in the league, right? But I remember taking my youth group paintballing. And uh, my team, we were playing capture the flag, and my team was pathetic. I wasn't that good. I was lucky. I was probably hiding behind the tree the whole time, not, not in the action. But all of my, pe all of my team was, was shot up, and, and once you get shot, you're out of the game. So it was me against maybe seven people left. And so I knew I was going down. So what did I decide to do? I, I was hiding behind the bush. Uh, I decided to fill my canister all the way to the top, right? That I had enough ammunition. And I knew I was going down. There's no way I can beat seven people. So if I'm going down, I'm going to go out in a blaze of glory, right? So I remember just, you know, psyching myself up. And as soon as I started running, I, I just started to spray everyone in terms of paintballing. I didn't hit anybody. And I just got lit up with paintballs. And it hurt. And it was not fun. The enemy, the devil, knows he's going down. And he wants to take as many people down with him. Yes? And I'm not saying that we wake up every day and, and acknowledge the enemy. But may we be ever so aware that when we wake up, we're in spiritual warfare. Yes? Yes, church? Yes. And to pray things like, God, protect me. Uh, when I see that person at work when, that I have a hard time with, God, help me to show. You know what I mean? Be specific. Call on the name of Jesus. Know where your weak areas are. So again, how do we finish strong? Uh, one more time. We need to be aware of that list, yes. But it says here, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, those brothers and sisters that have gone before us and lived it and finished strong, right? And I also believe that the cloud of witnesses are, are, are the body here also. So since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, Amen. the pioneer and perfecter of faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. We are to fix our eyes on Jesus. Clasp, never let go, hang on for dear life at times. Yes? Yeah. On our Jesus. And that can simply mean that when you want to give up or when you failed and that you just never let go. Jesus, I'm sorry. Jesus, take me back. Jesus, I need more of you. And to be honest with him, Jesus, I want to respond this way. Help me to respond like you. Again, how do we finish strong? And it goes back to the three C's, right? That we enjoy our relationship, our personal relationship with our Jesus. The basics. That we continue to have to be intimate, one-on-one -on -one with you and our God. Our daily devotions, praying, praying, praying. Not only starting with Jesus in the morning and praying for our food, but acknowledging Jesus 
in everything that we do. Yes? Which I know is difficult at times, because sometimes we, we compart we put our lives in compartments. Jesus can have this part of my life, but not this, right? And so Jesus is at the center of everything that we do. When we play sports, when we're on the internet, when we're at work, everything that we do. And church, the church family, like what we said before, that I, we are relying each other to prepare each other to meet Jesus. I remember my collar was a little bit off in terms of my, my wedding day. It was such a neat example, and my, my best man was standing right near me, and uh, as the, end, the, what do you call that, the processional? Yeah, as you know, the double doors open and Skye was walking down with her father, I just felt my best man, my best friend, fix my collar, making sure to prepare me to be united with my bride forever, right? And that we are here relying on each other to hold each other accountable, to pray for each other, to bear with one another, to serve one another, to love one another. I stopped at 35 one another's in the Bible. I think there's more. But I was like, okay, 39, 35 is, is, a, is a message to me that we are to be together with one another. Amen? Amen. And the third C, community. That we are about service, outreach. I hope that when you talk about Vallejo New Life Church to your family and friends and co-workers, I hope that you don't you don't just talk about the music and this preacher. Because a lot of times that's what we do. How's the church? How's the church? Then we'll finally we'll start to talk about, well, the music's boring, or the music's old school, or the music's too loud, or the music's great. We'll talk about music, right? When we talk about our church. Or we'll talk about the, 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 the teaching. Or the preacher takes uh, preaches too long. Or he's he's very funny or he's very engaging, he's very anointed, or she's a very anointed. A lot of times we'll talk about the music and the speaker, but there's more to the church, right? That I hope that when we talk about our church, that we do say, man, I just feel the presence of God when Donna leads worship, right? And I hope and pray that through our Zoom meetings and the teachings, that you hear the word of God, that it's not sugar-coated, that you're encouraged, but we're also convicted. Amen. Yes? And hopefully when, you, when we talk about our church, that we begin to talk about, man, I love that our church is always outside. I love that our church is always in the community. And I'm, we're not patting ourselves on the back and we're not you know, lifting our names up, but hopefully that when we start to talk about Vallejo New Life Church, those are the people that always pick up trash in the community. Those are the people that, that continue to feed the hungry. That send resources to other countries. And we're not the only ones. Amen? Amen. So again, we're striving to answer that question, how are we going to finish strong in this life? Famous video here that I'm going to show you, and then we're going to close in song worship again but 1992 barcelona olympics the image of this short clip to me is the image of how difficult life can be yes but the image in this clip will also hopefully show you that we have a heavenly father that will come down and help us finish strong let's receive the video if someone can hit these lights. Thank you. 
sometimes we might think of God as robotical or an uninvolved God. The reminder this morning and forever and ever that we have a heavenly Father. Amen. Powerful and mighty creator of everything, Lord of lords, King of kings, but yet desires to have relationship with us. So ultimately, how are we going to finish strong? Is that we enjoy our relationship with our Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together. Many things, Lord God, that can confuse and distort us from the truth and cause some to abandon. We just acknowledge the saving grace of Jesus, that you are Savior, that Jesus saves. Because you died and rose again. May that statement never get old. May it be ever so fresh in our heads and our hearts. A God has come. And with that, Father, joining Paul in his desire, may our desire continue to be that we have fought the good fight. That we are people strive to finish strong in you, Lord Jesus. Father, remind us of things that we've talked about on that list, to be very aware of all these things that will cause confusion and move us away from Jesus. And this morning, may we continue to be reminded also that you've given us permission to call you Abba, Daddy. That the only way that we are going to finish strong is your presence with us. And the church family Father, for some of us who may be far from you, we prayed before, may your presence be so evident. May this not just be an, another Sunday gathering. May this not just be out of duty to come this morning or click online. But may it be out of passion. <coughs> desperation and faithfulness and gratefulness. Lord, we love you. Oh, how we love you. So here's your church, Vallejo New Life, joining other Christ-centered churches. May we be the people that you've called us to be. We love you. Jesus and all God's people.
Jesus and glory and be your name of God. Thank you for creating this day for us to enjoy. And Lord, thank you for the opportunity to be here in your, in your house of worship to gather together in your name. Thank you, Lord, for each one that are here today and all, for all, all the people that are online uh, worshiping with us today. Bless us, Lord, from the uh, oldest to the youngest, Lord, and as we depart from this place, we ask you, Lord, to for your Holy Spirit to be with us, to guide us and protect us, and lead us, Lord, wherever life may take us. Thank you, Lord, for today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.